Exploitation Exhibitor's Trade Review March 4, 1922 This Beau Brummel was used by the Washington, Detroit, prior and during the showing of Warner Brothers' Why Girls Leave Home. He attracted considerable attention walking about town carrying the satchel, with his umbrella opened on a sunny day in winter. The Empire, Syracuse, New York, makes one board do the work of two by advertising its current attraction on one side and its next attraction on the other. In this case, two First Nationals, RSVP with Charles Ray and The Beautiful Liar with Catherine MacDonald, were featured. Harmon Yaffa, manager of the Majestic, New York City, dressed a man and woman in costumes to impersonate Wallace Reed and Elsie Ferguson, then put them to distributing heralds for Paramount's Forever. The people fell for it and reached for the heralds instead of waiting for them to be forced on them. Roy Tilson, manager of the Strand and Regent Theaters, Lansing, Michigan, is a great believer in wax figures as a means of exploiting his features, and generally reproduces, as near as possible, one of their scenes in his displays. This one was used for First Nationals' The Forbidden Thing. A display representing a stage and its performers was used by manager Constant of the Strand, Steubenville, Ohio, and various store windows for Fox's A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. They were made from cutouts of posters with framework of beaver board and placed against the glass of the window. Abe Levy of The Strand, Waco, Texas, made this lobby display for First Nationals Hail the Woman from a 24 sheet and then painted it with shellac to give it strength under strong light. Levy is one of the most persistent exploiteers in Texas and has put over some good ones lately. The Liberty, Pittsburgh, besides using posters, announced Educational's comedy Saving Sister Sue in big lights in front of the theater. Showing how the Criterion, New York, used electric lights to exploit First National's red-hot romance on the most brightly lighted street in the world, Broadway. This window, arranged by the TND Theater, San Jose, for First National's Woman's Place, starring Constance Talmadge, made a direct appeal to the women folks of San Jose with its display of toilet articles. The men folks, though, fell for that big cutout of Connie, mounted in the center and pointing her finger at you. This unique lobby display installed by the Columbia, Phoenix, Arizona, for Goldwyn's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, carries the futuristic theme of the picture in an effective manner. As an advance prologue for Warner Brothers' school days, manager Weisfeld of The Strand, Milwaukee, had a fake slate made of paper on the stage through which a girl broke, singing School Days. As a prologue for First Nationals' One Arabian Night, director Ashby of The Circle, Indianapolis, arranged a stage setting showing an oriental villa with a protruding balcony, below which appeared a hunchback singing The Bedouin Love Song, followed by a girl on the balcony singing Less Than Dust. It made a hit with the audience. The Sun, Omaha, Nebraska, put the scaffold of their new theater that is being erected to work and advertising Fox's Queen of Sheba by putting a billboard on it that could be seen for blocks. The box office felt the effects of this unique billboard. A life-size figure of Machiste, chained to the mill with real chains, attracted a great deal of attention in Portland, Oregon, when used by manager Bratt of the People's Theater for First National's Cabiria. In addition to this lobby display, he also advertised in the Italian newspaper, featuring the producer Gabriele D'Annunzio, who has a tremendous following among the Italians. The psychology of photos attracting the public's attention is well carried out in this window tie-up, arranged by the auditorium in Dayton, Ohio for Metro's Peacock's Alley. Hope Hampton created a near riot in Brooklyn when she appeared in person at Gordon's Olympia with her latest release, Stardust. The banner was all the advertising done. One of the floats used in a parade in Atlanta staged by the Forsyth Theater for Goldwyn's Theodora. The canopy and pedestals were made of beaver board, painted to imitate marble. Draping the horses with some light material so as to hide the distinctly modern harness would have added a great deal to the appearance of this attractive float. When you play United Artists' The Ruling Passion, be sure to order this one sheet from your exchange and put it in the lobby, as it will attract attention. This one sheet for RC's Beyond the Rainbow, made by Otis, reproduces one of the scenes in coloring that is unusually effective. Canadian showmen are beginning to appreciate the value of lobby decoration and exploiting their features. And among those brought to our notice, this one from the Madison in Toronto for Fox's Over the Hill 
ranks among the best from an advertising standpoint, when the size of the lobby, which is less than 10 by 15 feet, is considered. Two First Nationals recently played adjoining theaters in Akron, Ohio, Mother of Mine at the Dreamland and RSVP at Barbian's Waldorf. Aside from the marquee advertising, both houses used considerable newspaper space, and the friendly competition indulged in resulted in big business for both. The owner of this window turned it over entirely to manager O'Hare of the Amory, Clarinda, Iowa, for exploiting First Nationals' One Arabian Night. The big figure of Pola Negri and the Desert Effect were cut out from a 24 sheet, which gives an idea of the size of the window display. This is 100% window cooperation between the merchant and exhibitor for the exhibitor.